and the seeds. And you're going to see some thirds appearing in here because we're going to be converting between thirds. Thirds turn into fractional powers. Now, there is a formula here in a box. If I have a, as a base, and I have a fractional power of 1 over n, n would be a number, like 1 over 3 or 1 over 2. Whatever number is on the bottom of that fraction tells you what type of square root you have. So if it was a 2 here, it would be a normal square root. If it's a 3 here, it's a cubed root. You put a 3 at the front. If it was a 4 there, it'd be a fourth root. Okay, whatever that number is, is the type of square root. Can we stop talking, please? The base here goes underneath that square root sign. So a couple of really quick examples to help you wrap your brain around that. A to the power of a half is the same as the A comes underneath the square root sign. And the 2 that's on the bottom here means that this is a 2 at the front of your square root. However, a normal square root sign is assumed that, that is a 2. So you don't, act, you don't have to write it if it's a 2. 2 means normal square root sign. But you could still do one, yeah? Any higher number than that, so 1 third... So the A still comes underneath the square root sign, but the 3 comes out the front, making that a cubed root of A. Okay? Now that is if it's just a 1 on the top. We could change the top number. We could change it to be M over N. The number on the bottom is still the type of square root. So that number still goes to here. The number that is on the top of the fraction comes underneath with your base. So it's a to the power of m. It's much easier to see it with an actual example. Let me give you one. a to the power of 2, let me write that neater, 2 thirds. Okay? The a is the base. It comes underneath. The 3 that's on the bottom of that fraction tells you that it's a cubed root. So it's a 3 at the front of that square root sign. The 2 on the top comes underneath with the A. So it's an A squared underneath. And that's all that rule is telling you to do. Let's practice. Example 1. It says to evaluate each of these, we're going to practice using those rules. Yes, you could type those into your calculator. And if you had them on the test, please check them on your calculator. Okay, definitely. Even You can do the working out, absolutely, but you could still check them on your calculator to make sure you got them right. So, A, a power of a half is going to change into a square root, and it's going to be a normal square root because it's a 2 on the bottom of that fraction of 4. The 4 just comes underneath. Now, we know what the square root of 4 is. It's 2, so that just equals 2. And done. Maya, can you please stop talking and listen? The two, it's like a square root out here. But when it's, a, when it's a two, we don't actually have to write it in front of our square root sign. It's only the higher powers that we have to write under there. Now I can't erase it. There we go. Yeah? Let's try again. So 100 to the power of a half. Power of a half is the same as a normal square root of 100. The square root of 100 is equal to 10. That's it. That's all we have to do. Part C, a power of a third. So I've changed the bottom number of that fraction. So this 8 is going to come underneath my square root sign. But because it's a 3, I have to put the 3 in front of that square root sign. So it's a cubed root. Make sure it's a little 3. It's not 3 times by that. It means a cubed root of 8. Now you can type that in your calculator because that comes out nice so you know where your cube root button is. Cube root of 8, what is it? 2, yes, thank you David. So the cubed root button. Yeah, you can. My mouse is gone. 
There it is. So the cube root button, you press shift and then the normal square root, and there it is. All right, part D. There's a bit too much noise in the room. Thank you. Part D. This is actually combining one of our rules from last lesson. That's a little minus a third there. There's a minus sign there. Whenever you have a negative power, deal with that first, okay? We can't use these rules that we're learning about today when there's a minus sign in the way. So to refresh what we did, to get rid of a negative power, you put it on the bottom of the fraction. So you have a one on the top, and we're going to have 125 to the power of a positive a third when we put it to the bottom of the fraction. Then we can use our rule to change that into square root form. So the one is still on the top. The 125 is going to come underneath my square root sign. It's a power of a third, which means that is going to be a cubed root. The three comes at the front of the square root sign. Now check on your calculator. What is the cubed root of 125? Sorry? Five, correct. So that just equals 1 over 5. That's Simplifies the, down. Yeah. You times 3 by the square root of 125. Yeah, that will work. Yeah, yeah, all right, but it's a bit naughty because we don't like to have the minus. We can't really have a negative cubed root, like a cubed root. I want you to learn the skill. Well, these aren't always going to be with numbers. So you could you could have, even for this question, you could have typed it in from the very beginning here. You could have typed that in exactly that form and it will give you that answer. Okay. Okay? The thing I'm wanting you to learn here is how to rearrange these things because we're going to do them with letters as well. Yeah. Okay, we're going to do them with algebra. All right? So let's get going. Number two, this is calculator practice. It actually just says evaluate on the calculator to four decimal places. So straight in your calculator, I want 34 to the power of, and you can put a fractional power in there, just press your fraction button, 1 over 6. It says to four decimal places. So I want the 1. I want the seven, nine, 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 four decimal places. What was that? Yeah, because the last, after that, so I want seven, nine, nine, it's an eight there, that's going to round it up to be a nine. Yeah? Yeah? You think so? Do part B, type that one in, 300. Use your power button to the power of 3 over 8. And again, we want four decimal places. So I want the 4902. The 4 after that is going to round down or round off. So 8.4902. Question 3. It says specifically in the question that you have to write these in third form. Putting them in your calculator and giving me a decimal answer is not going to work. It has to be in third form. So, practicing what we've learnt. Girls, I know you're going ahead, but you need to be silent. Okay. A power of a half is the same as a normal square root, and the 55 comes underneath. Check to see if you can simplify the third. Any perfect square numbers can come out of that. No, move on to the next one. For the next one, 5 is my base. It's going to come underneath the square root sign. The 2 on the bottom means the normal square root. It will be out the front there. But the 3 on the top has to come underneath with the 5. So it's 5 cubed under there. 5 cubed is... 125. 
I can simplify that, Serge. 25, a perfect square that I can divide that by. 25, not by 6, times 5. The square root of 25 is 5, so it's 5 root 5. Okay, so I had to simplify my third, which we did at the beginning of the topic. A little refresher for you. Question four, we're finally going to put some letters in there. And there's some of our other index laws coming in here as well. If I am multiplying things with the same basis, I add the powers. So two-fifths plus one-fifth makes three-fifths. Okay, it just says simplify. I have simplified. I don't have to turn that into third form unless it asks me to, so I'm going to leave that question there. Next one, part B. Expanding out those brackets means that I need to multiply the powers together. You tend there's still a lot of talking. I don't know how you expect to understand something if you're not listening. Thank you. Expanding out the brackets, multiply each power. So the x is the first base. I want to multiply the 3 with the 1, 6. 3 times 1, 6 is 3, 6, but that fraction simplifies to a half. You can use a calculator for that if you want to. Okay, so times in those together, you get a power of a half. Y is the second base. It's a y to the power of 4, so I go 4 times 1, 6. Again, you can use a calculator for that. That's 4, 6, and that simplifies to 2 thirds. Okay, so it's just using our same index laws with our fractional powers. And C, one more rather messy one down here. We have a fraction and lots of fractional powers in there. Multiply each one of those powers together. So use your calculator. I want two-thirds times a half. What do you get? One-third. Yes, so it's A to the one-third. Over, now do the B on the bottom. You have three-quarters times the half. Three-eighths. Okay, you can times fractions. I'm sure many of you can times fractions in your head, but just be careful you don't make silly mistakes with it if you're going to do that. That doesn't simplify anymore, so that is done. Next page, quick. Write in index form. Each one of these have a square root, and we want to put them back into fractional powers. So the first one is a normal square root. A normal square root is always the same as a power of a half. So that's the same for B. Wait. 7 is the base, and it's a power of 1 half. Part C, it's a normal square root, but this, it's a little bit messier because I have two things, or quite a few things there, underneath that square root sign. All of that has to be to the power of a half. Now, if I was going to expand that out... I need to make everything to the power of a half. That means the 3 has to be to the power of a half. That is the same as square root of 3, but it has asked me to do it in index form, so that's why I'm writing it like that. The x to the power of 7, I multiply the 7 with the half to be 7 over 2. Part D. The 5 out the front is... Not a part of the square root, so it's going to sit out the front. The A is the base. The number at the front of the square root sign goes to the bottom of the fraction. So the 3 goes to the bottom. The number that is with the A, the 4, is going to come to the top of the fraction. One last one, guys. I know it's lunchtime, but bear with me. One more little question. Oh, it's not lunchtime. We better click then. So the last one, we have 5 at the front. 5, root 5 is going to be 5 to the power of a half. How am I going to simplify that? I'm multiplying things that have the same bases. So this is 5 to the 1 times 5 to the half, which means we add those powers together. 
Now that would be five to the one and a half, but we prefer to write that as an improper fraction, so three over two, because that would be then able to transfer back into third form easier if we needed it to be. All right, thank you for the extra little bit of time.